Welcome. I'm Nathan Newbro, and I'm the CEO of the Colorado Springs Philharmonic. I'm here with associate conductor Thomas Wilson, who is the uh, author and conductor of this weekend's performance of uh, In the Myths, Mathis der Mahler, which is part of the Al and Lee Bittner Vanguard performances. We're awfully fortunate to be able to perform this work, which may be a local premiere, or it certainly hasn't been performed here in a, in a good long time. It's been a while. Uh, yeah. At least in my memory, I know that Christopher Wilkins conducted it, mm. and Lawrence Leighton Smith. Yeah. Uh, so it has been a while, but it's a great piece, yeah. and, uh, and it's the exact kind of piece that I think benefits from the vanguard approach. Yeah, yeah. so this is, this is a musician's favorite. Mm -hmm. Many musicians love the works of Paul Hindemith, have played the works of Paul Hindemith. Tell us why this particular work works so well for a vanguard performance. Well, because the more you know about it, the mm -hmm. better it gets. Um, for a lot of people, they hear it and, and they say, oh, you know, incredible first movement, very lovely second movement, and then what happened in the third? But he's depicting three uh, panels in Matthias Grunewald's uh, the, um, Isenheim altarpiece. And so the first one is the Concert of Angels. Mm -hmm. And you have these, you have these three angels, uh, Raphael, Michael, and uh, and Gabriel, that are that are uh, basically putting on a concert for the 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 for Mary after she's given birth and she has the newborn uh, Jesus in the other half of the panel, and uh, and it's and it's just such great music. It's so exciting, and Hindemith does it so well because there, there's almost always three things going on mm -hmm. in the score at, at the time. And, and if you look at the painting itself, and we'll be looking at all the paintings as we go through this presentation, if you look at the painting itself, it's kind of a cramped space, it, you know, but it, the music is so majestic, it sounds like you're, you're just out under the open sky and watching these, these three angels just do all this in, uh, over, overhead, it's just, it's incredible. And, uh, and then the, the second movement is the, uh, the entombment, and, and this is at the base of the altarpiece. Uh, but it's a little bit more of a sleight of hand in the opera. This it, it's in Act Six, and and this uh, young woman uh, who's one of the characters in the opera, her father has just been killed in the peasants' uprising. She is she's dying mostly out of grief, but she's also been uh, somewhat injured, and 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 so this music unfolds. But but in the symphony, Hindemith just says this is the entombment. Yeah. So yeah. it's a little bit of sleight of hand. Uh, but it's it's absolutely gorgeous music. But the last movement is the Temptation of Saint Saint Anthony, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course you have Saint Anthony uh, in the tomb, and he's getting ready to go off into this life of isolation. He was a, a famous hermit uh, uh, saint, and uh, and and he's being attacked by by demons, mm -hmm. and and so it's not supposed to be pretty. But if you don't know what Hindemith is depicting, you're well, what 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 is this? But it's brilliant and it's exciting and it's and it makes this this grand alleluia at the end all make all the more sense. Mm -hmm. you, we, we've talked about the, how, how well this works for the vanguard performances. Maybe we should say what that is okay. for people who have, who aren't familiar with the Alan Lee Bittner vanguard performances. Each one of these is is dedicated, in most cases, to a single piece of music. Right. It just and for and this time it's dedicated just to this one work, and in the first half of the concert, I like to describe it as a as a live documentary performed on stage. There's a lot of scholarly work that goes into this. Uh, we'll have we'll have a narrator uh, there on stage. We'll have the we'll have video and film and photography uh, above the stage, shown on a, on a multimedia screen. The musicians will be there playing excerpts of the music. And then after intermission, you know very well, the after intermission, all that stuff goes away and you play the piece from beginning to end the way that it's meant to be heard. And I, I think audiences who are already familiar with the work will walk away even more familiar with the work and understanding it and appreciating it in a new way. And those who have never heard this piece before in their lives will get a, a terrific introduction into the world of Paul. Paul Hindemith. So, a, as the author of this, so the scholarly work you 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 did all of this. As as the author of this, how did you construct the first half of this program? Well, um, 
it took a lot of research to put it together, uh, including a lot of cutting edge research. Um, I, you know, using the, the some international databases, even pulling in some some papers that were just being turned in 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 uh, um, in December and using them as part of the research. So, uh, you know, doctoral theses and things like that for people who are digging deeper. But uh, it's you know, it's an amazing, amazing piece. And what I wanted to do was sort of let it unfold with the Eisenheim altarpiece. Mm -hmm. So you really have three, it's interesting because in that, in that one panel you have the three angels, uh, Raphael, Michael, and, and Gabriel. And you really have three other angels here. Mm -hmm. You have Saint Antony, uh, so we're looking at fourth century uh, uh, hermit. And uh, and and he, you know, he, he wanted to live this life of solitude and and, and constant uh, praise and prayer. And then you have Matthias Grunewald, who uh, was born in the late 1400s, uh, did a lot of his significant work in the uh, early 1500s, and uh, magnificent artist. Of course, this was the Renaissance, but he was he painted very much in a Gothic style. Mm -hmm. And uh, and his and he did, there's very little that we have surviving him. There's about ten. Uh, religious themed works and, mm -hmm. a, and a self portrait, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And the, the greatest of, of his efforts is the, uh, the Eisenheim altarpiece. And so, this, this altarpiece it, it starts in a closed position, and then you, you, it opens to an, an intermediate position, and then you finally a, 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 a completely open position. And in each, in each uh, way, he's got different uh, scenes from the life of St. Anthony because it was the Antonite order. Mm -hmm that, uh, that uh, uh, commissioned the piece. So I wanted, to, I wanted to, to sort of let it unfold as the, um, as the altarpiece opens. And so the, in, in terms of the panels, it actually unfolds exactly the way the symphony does as well. The angelic concert, the entombment, and the temptation of St. Saint, Saint Anthony. Well, I want to thank you because as a, as a former musician, I, I, we said that Hindemith is the musician's friend. Hindemith is, is a composer just loved by musicians all over the world. Mm -hmm. My admission to you is I've never heard it performed live. Oh, I've boy. only heard, isn't that crazy? I've only <laughs> heard recordings of the work, and so this will be, be my first opportunity to hear it performed live and I want to thank you on behalf of all the music lovers. Well, in, in my opinion, in yeah. my opinion, it is a serious contender for the greatest symphony of the 20th century. A serious contender. Yeah. And I intend to make that case both with uh, the, the presentation part and also with the performance on Saturday. Well, well, you heard it here. Be there to hear it live. Hindemith's Mathis der Mahler on the Al and Lee Bittner Vanguard performances. Thomas, thank you very much. Thank you. If you want to know more about the Colorado Springs Philharmonic, you can find us online at csphilharmonic.org. Thanks, everybody.